Hokey dokey. Welcome to this week's quick quiz lesson. In this video, we'll be covering some of the big ideas in 1524's quiz six in 15 minutes or less. Let's get started. So quiz six is the shortest quiz you will take this entire year. There's the least amount of information on it. So in this video, I'm just gonna cover every single type of problem you will see in quiz six. Before we jump into the problems, I just wanna go over a few things about derivatives. In the last quiz, we learned about the power rule or how to take derivatives of functions using the power rule. A few important ideas we learned from power rule were this. If we are taking the derivative of a constant times x, the derivative will just be that constant. For example, if the function is 7x, then the derivative is just 7. Or if the function is pi times x, then f prime is just pi. Another important piece we learned is that the derivative of a constant is 0. For example, the derivative of 7 is 0. The derivative of pi is 0. The derivative of e is 0. Keep in mind e is just a constant just like pi. So we know that if we have a function like x cubed, then the derivative will be 3x squared. We bring down the 3 and then subtract the exponent by 1. There's a problem in this quiz that mentions the function x to the e. It's important to recognize that x to the e still has the form x to the a. Therefore, it is a power function. So we can still use the power rule to take the derivative of x to the e. So what we do is bring down the e, leave the x, and then subtract one from the exponent. So we just get e times x to the e minus one. And we can leave it just like that. So in this quiz, you'll see twists of that same sort of idea. For example, what do we do if we're given the function one over x cubed? A good educated guess might be to say one over three x squared. That's a good guess, but unfortunately that's not how it works. Instead, if you have to take the derivative of a function like one over x cubed, it'll always help to rewrite it with the help of negative exponents. Using rules we've learned in the past, one over x cubed can be rewritten as x to the negative three. Now the reason we do this is so that now our function is in the form x to the a, where a is just a constant. So now we can actually use the power rule for this term. And so we bring out the negative three, we leave the x, and then we subtract negative three by one. And what that gives us is negative four. So altogether we have negative three x to the negative four. And then if we wanted to rewrite this so that it had no negative exponents, we would just throw x to the positive 4 in the denominator while we leave the negative 3 on top. So another example of a function you might have to rewrite is any function that has a root, so a square root or a cube root, like in this case, or fourth through, fifth through, onward. Again, it helps to rewrite it so that it's in the form x to the a. And so the cube root will translate to an exponent of 1 third. So now that we have it in this x to the a form, we can take the derivative using the power rule. One third comes out in front, we leave the x, and then we subtract the exponent by one. So one third minus one will give us negative two thirds. If you want a trick for subtracting one from fraction exponents, you can always take the top number minus the bottom number and then just keep it divided by that bottom number. So one minus three is negative two, and then we just leave it over three. And this is our derivative. And then again, if we wanna rewrite it without any negative exponents, we can leave the one on top, the three on the bottom, and then throw the x to the two thirds in that denominator with the three. That was all the power rule stuff. Here's some other derivatives it'll help to memorize in this section. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. The derivative of ln of x, or natural log of x, is one over x. And the derivative of a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a. For example, if you see nine to the x, the derivative will be nine to the x times the natural log of nine. All right, and that's all you need to know. So in this problem, they give us four statements and they're just asking which of the following is true. Starting with A, they say if f of x equals 237, the derivative of f of x is 237. Well, we know that the derivative of any constant should be zero. So this should say zero and not 237. B, the derivative of p of q equals q at q equals one is zero. Now, these are very wordy. What I would recommend is first thinking of this function as p equals q, which is really just the same thing as y equals x. So imagine they just said the derivative of y equals x, and then also go ahead and just ignore this q equals one, because if we're thinking of this as just y equals x, this statement says the derivative of y equals x is zero, and that's false, because we know that y prime would be one, because the derivative of a constant times x, or one x, is just that constant, or just one. 
And then same exact thing for C, they're saying f of x equals x, in other words, y equals x, and they're saying that the derivative of y equals x is zero. But that's false because we know that it's one. So then the last one, they say if f of x equals 237, the derivative of f of x is zero. And so we'll talk about this in a sec, but for now we can't ignore it. Keep in mind, all they're saying is that the derivative of 237 is zero. And that is true because the derivative of a constant is zero. They could have said any x value here and this still would have been true. It doesn't matter the x value that's right here. It's more about the derivative of 237 being zero. So we break out the eraser to see that D is true. Another example of that same problem, let's go through it much faster. The derivative of Q, that's like the derivative of X, is not zero, it should be one. B, the derivative of X is one. This should be a true statement. Let's talk about the last two. The derivative of X is zero, that's false. And the last one, the graph of F of X equals X is a vertical line. So if we know that F of X equals X is just Y equals X, and we think about that on a graph, that should be a diagonal line not a vertical line. Let's say, for example, they gave you f of x equals 237. They might say the same thing is a vertical line, or they might say horizontal line. I don't know. But if we think about the function f of x equals 237, what that's telling us is that the y value is always 237. So no matter what the x value is, the y value should always be 237. So f of x equals 237 would be a horizontal line. Just keep that in mind going forward. But again, b was our answer here. All right, in this problem, they give us four power functions. They say pick the one for which the derivative at x equals 1 equals negative 2. So the approach is to go ahead and rewrite all these functions if need be so that they are in the form x to the a, x to the negative 2, x to the negative 4, and then these last two are already in that power function form. So no need to change those. So now when we take the derivative of each of these functions using the power rule, we get negative 2 x to the negative 3, negative 4 x to the negative 5, 4 x cubed and 2x. So now they're wondering if we plug in x equals 1 to all of these derivative functions, which derivative function would give us negative 2 as an answer? So the nice thing here is this 1 raised to any exponent, whether that's 1 squared, 1 to the 6th, 1 to the negative 6th, 1 to the 0, every single power of 1 just equals 1. So when we plug in one here, 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 and here, all we're getting as a result is one. So one to the negative three is one, one to the negative five is one, x cubed, one cubed is one, and then one is one. Yeah, so really, if all of these are one, all we're left with are the coefficients of these derivative functions. And again, we just wanna find the one that gives us negative two, and that was option A. And here, I just wanted to go over one more example. So our first step is to go ahead and rewrite all these functions so that they're all in the form x to the a. Now, I wanna point out a shortcut about this one. Because we are always plugging in x equals one into the derivative, we can actually see the answer we're looking for, that is negative one third, in these options right now. So as we scan through these options, we realize that option b has a negative one third. So that's a pretty educated guess to pick b as our answer, but let's talk about why it works out. So when we take the derivative of x to the negative one third, we bring out negative negative one third, leave the x, and then subtract one from the exponent to get negative four thirds. Again, the trick is top number minus bottom number over bottom number, so negative four thirds. And so if this is the derivative, and then we're plugging in x equals one, but then one raised to any exponent is just one, then we just have negative one third times one, which is negative one third. So the derivative of this function, or this function at x equals one, is negative one third. So to summarize, you will always see this answer that the they're looking for in the rewritten form of all these functions. In other words, once you get all these functions in the form of x to the a, the value they're looking for is the a value. So in the last one, they wanted to know which derivative equaled negative two. We didn't have to do all this. We could have just looked at the a value of one of the functions to find negative two, and we would have still gotten a as our answer. In this problem, we are given the function h of x, and they're asking us to find h prime of 32. So the first step is to find h prime, or the derivative of h. So we bring out the 2 fifths, leave the x, and subtract one from the exponent to get negative 3 fifths. Again, top number minus bottom number divided by bottom number. And if we want to, we can go ahead and rewrite this function, like so, so that it has no negative exponents. Then we just plug in 32. And at this point, we could either plug it into a calculator to see which one of these answers matches up, or we could solve it by hand. 
What I would take care of first is this 32 and this five on the bottom. The five on the bottom means that we're taking the fifth root of 32. The fifth root of 32 is two because two multiplied by itself five times gives us 32. And so once we take care of that fifth root of 32, we're left with two to the third. And then two to the third is just eight. We get two over 40 or one over 20 and we're done. Keep in mind, in some versions of this problem, we might still be required to rewrite the function before taking its derivative. So if we rewrite this function, we'll have x to the negative 3 fourths, and then we'll take its derivative. And then we can rewrite, plug in 81, take the fourth root of 81 to get 3. So then we have 3 to the 7th, which if we cancel out a 3 on top and 3 on the bottom, we're left with negative 1 over 4 times 3 to the 6th. And then if we multiply that out, we get negative 1 over 2,916. And we're done. All right, just one more example of this one. So we'll rewrite, rewrite again, take the derivative, rewrite that, plug in 27, cube root 27 to get 3. 3 to the 4th is 81, and then 3 times 81 is 243, and we're done. Before we jump into this problem, let's talk about what's important to know. The derivative of the function e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of x to the e is e times x to the e minus 1. Again, that uses power rule. And then if we graph the function e to the x, it is always increasing. It is increasing for all x values. In other words, as we go from left to right, the y values get larger and larger. So option A, the derivative of x to the e is e x to the e minus 1. That is correct. B, the derivative of x to the e at x equals 1 is e. So for this one, if we know that the derivative of x to the e is e x to the e minus 1, then what we'll do is plug in x equals 1 to this derivative and see what we get. We would get e times 1 to the e minus 1, but 1 raised to any power is 1, so then e times 1 is e. So that is also correct. The function e to the x is decreasing. Well, that is a false statement because we said it's constantly increasing, which is what d says. So d is true. And then the last one, the derivative of e to the x at x equals 0 is 1. Well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So then we just plug in x equals 0. e to the 0 equals 1 because anything to the 0 power is 1. So c is our incorrect statement. In this problem, we're given the function x to the sixth, and they're asking us to find f prime at 1.92. So we'll find the derivative first. Using power rule, we just get 6x to the fifth, and then we just plug in 1.92, and we get 156.55, You get it. It's just, uh, it's c. All right, and same process for this one. We'll find the derivative first. Because this is an exponential function, we will get 9 to the x times natural log of 9. Keep in mind, in the last one, we had a power function of the form x to the a. But in this problem, we have an exponential function of the form a to the x. So once we find the derivative, just plug in 0.66, and we get this, or just 9.37. Alrighty, and whatever you do, do not let this one trip you up. We want to find the derivative of x, or 1x. The derivative of a constant times x is just that constant. And so when we plug in 2.64 for x, but there are no x's in the derivative, the derivative just stays 1. And that's our answer. All right, same deal here. Function, derivative, plug in the value, and we're done. All right, just a few more derivatives and we'll wrap up. e to the x has a derivative of e to the x. The derivative of a constant times x is just that constant. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, and the derivative of x is just 1. Check it out. Alrighty, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to stay updated for more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. If you want to connect with me or other students in the same course as you or ask me questions or whatever, join the Discord. That's all for this week's quick quiz lesson. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. <laughs> all right.